In steps one and two, we looked at first of all, how to identify the significant hazards within the scenario that you're looking at, followed by looking at who may be in danger and how they might be affected. Now we have to go on to figure out how bad the harm might be and how likely it is to happen. In other words, we're asking, what is the risk? And when we think back to what the definition of a risk is, it's the likelihood that someone will come to harm or suffer adverse health effects as a result of being exposed to a hazard. And we must remember that although a hazard may exist, it might not represent or present a risk to people or property. On the screen in just a second, you're going to see an example of a risk matrix. Let's have a look at it. Okay, so now you should see what the risk matrix looks like. And hopefully you can see as well that on one axis you have severity and on the other axis you have likelihood. And these two component parts are multiplied together to give you a risk score. Once you're able to assign a value to each likelihood and severity and multiply them together, then you will have a result that will represent the significance of the risk that exists. As shown on the matrix, for each of the elements, the number chosen represents the level of significance. It might be high, medium or low. If we're thinking about likelihood, just remember that we're asking the question, what are the chances of that outcome actually happening? And when we're thinking about severity, we're asking how bad is the outcome likely to be? In other words, how severe would the injury or illness be? The matrix that we're using here for this training is one of the most simple examples of a risk matrix that you might see, but it also is very effective. And it means that it's easy for you to get comfortable with the process of using such a matrix. And then also as well, it makes it easier for you to communicate the results of any risk assessment that you might do. Although you may see more complex or detailed versions of this around, often they're not actually necessary and they all work along the same principle. And with that in mind, it's important to note that the intention of a risk matrix isn't to give you a quantitative measure of the actual risk, but just to allow you to measure the perceived risk level and from that point you can prioritize your actions. Let's delve a bit deeper into each element and just reflect on what decisions we have to make when we're looking at each individual hazard or activity. First of all, we have to think about the likelihood. So again, what is the chance of the harm happening? We have to decide from levels one to three whether it's very likely, possible or unlikely. So if you take an example of one of the hazards that you've identified in your make-believe scenario or within your work environment, and just think about where that would sit accurately according to the reality that you found during your investigations looking at the hazards. Then we need to go on to severity. So we have to ask the question again, how severe or how bad is the outcome going to be in terms of the harm, whether that be an injury or ill health to a person? So our examples on this risk matrix would be, is it going to be likely that it's a major injury or fatality? Is it going to be a minor injury? Or on the lesser extent, would it just be a trivial injury as the outcome of the hazard that you've identified? Hopefully again, if you're thinking of your example, it'll be easy to put it into the relative block and pick a number that you can put into your risk matrix that then can be multiplied against the likelihood to give us our level of risk. Another thing about the risk matrix which works really well from a visual point of view is using a traffic light system so that red, amber and green color system that we're all probably very used to gives us an easy visual representation of where the high risks are so we can focus our attention towards them and take action appropriately. Okay, so hopefully you've got the grips with the concept around severity and likelihood combining together to give us our risk level. Now, if we apply this to a make-believe scenario, we want you to interpret what your perception of the risk level would be and you can score the severity and the likelihood according to our risk matrix. So you'll see up on the screen now an example of a scenario within a workplace. 
As you can hopefully see in the photos on the screen right now, we have a forklift driver operating his vehicle in a warehouse type environment. It appears that the forklift driver is moving along or has been moving along with a pallet loaded onto the forks of the forklift and there is a pedestrian about to walk across his path. So what we want you to do is give us your opinion on how you would rate the severity of this scenario when it comes to the outcome of any accident that would occur in these circumstances. And secondly, we want you to look at the likelihood of it happening with all the things that you can see in the photo taken into account. Hopefully you have your answers jotted down on a piece of paper by now or on your computer and you can refer to them while we talk through this. So firstly, let's think about the severity. If a person was hit under these circumstances by the forklift as they appear to be in the photo, how severe would that outcome be? Well, in our opinion, the severity of this would be very high. It would be likely that either a major injury or even a fatality might be the outcome of this accident. And therefore, we would have to mark this as a number three on our risk matrix, so that's the highest level of severity for our matrix in this scenario. Did you agree? Second of all then, we need to ask, what are the chances of this event happening under the current circumstances? To be more specific, what is the likelihood of a collision between the pedestrian and the forklift? When we're trying to determine the likelihood within a scenario, we're really asking how well are the risks currently controlled? Unlike when you're looking at the severity of an outcome, which usually doesn't change too much, when you're thinking about likelihood, there's lots of factors at play that can influence the probability of something happening. In the scenario we're looking at, you might want to think of factors such as how easy is it for the person or the forklift to get into an area where there may be a collision. Also, is there anything that you can see that's been put in place to make it obvious to the forklift driver and or the pedestrian that there may be a risk of a collision in the area that they're both operating in? And third of all, what are the current behaviours of the operator of the forklift in this scenario? As you can see, the forklift operator is driving with the load on the forklift raised, which from the different angles you can see is clearly obscuring his view. And this behaviour in itself is obviously going to increase the risk of a collision. Going on the evidence that we've been given in this scenario, it looks like it would be reasonable to classify the likelihood of a collision between a pedestrian and a forklift as highly likely according to a risk matrix. Would you agree with this? Don't worry if you didn't agree with this outcome. We will go into more detail in the next step about evaluating risks and deciding when it's appropriate to add more control measures. Hopefully once we've been through that process, you'll gain more confidence in deciding what is likely. And also, we'll do an activity to come back to this scenario and identify where extra control measures might be beneficial. So, if we said that the severity is level three, the highest level that we can get, and the likelihood is very likely, also number three, the highest we can get, where does that land on a risk matrix? Hopefully you can see when we match up our severity rating of three, which is of course a major injury or worse, against a likelihood level of three and multiply the two together, that gives us a figure of nine, which on a risk matrix is the highest figure you can get. So in this scenario, we would really be asking as part of our risk assessment that more control measures are put in place because the likelihood of something bad happening is very high and that should be unacceptable within most businesses.